Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another video. Today we are going to look at the NVIDIA cards and especially on how we can manage two video cards in one laptop. I have here an XPS 15 from last year which has an integrated Intel graphic card and a dedicated NVIDIA card and we are going to look at the technology called Prime and also the various methods on how we can manage those two cards in the laptop. So without further ado, let's get going. So here we are on the XPS 15 2019 version which I finally got here. It's a used laptop, it's not a new laptop. But the interesting thing here is that we have two graphic cards in this laptop. So let me pull up here the terminal because I already have the LSPCI command run here. And you can see we have two graphic cards in this laptop. One is this VGA compatible controller which is an Intel UHD Graphics 630. And we have also the 3D controller, which is an NVIDIA GTX 1650 mobile, the Max-Q version. So we have two graphic cards here and we want to find out basically how to manage those graphic cards. So let me close the terminal. And let's pull up here the browser that I already prepared. And this is the ArchWiki and this is the page relating to the Prime technology. So let's go through it and see what we can do. So as it says here, Prime is a technology used to manage hybrid graphics found on recent desktops and laptops. So this technology is included in the Optimus for NVIDIA, which we are going to look in a second. However, let's scroll through the content here. To enable this Prime technology here, we have several options. We can use the open source drivers or the closed source drivers. Now, this specific laptop here and this specific scenario that I'm going to explore in this video, it's for NVIDIA cards. And in this video, I'm gonna use the closed source drivers because they are offering better performance. And this card, it's still supported by NVIDIA. So because I'm gonna use closed source drivers, I'm gonna click the link here. And this is the first thing we need to do. So we need to basically install the drivers for our card. So to install drivers for our card, in this case, an NVIDIA card, what I want to do here, I want to open this link, which is going to go to the ArchWiki for the NVIDIA cards. So let me open this tab here. And let's go down here to installation. Now, the installation of the driver is defined by three points. One, you need to know which card you have. Two, you need to determine the necessary driver. And three, you need to install the appropriate driver. So first step, find out what card you have. Now you can type in this command here in the terminal and it will give you the name of your cards. Now I know already the card I have in here, it's a GTX 1650, so I don't need to run this, but I need to determine the necessary driver version for my card. I have three options here. I can find the code name from the Nouveau Wiki's code names page. I can look up the NVIDIA legacy card list or also visiting the NVIDIA's driver download site. Now I'm going to use the first method, which is the Nouveau Wiki's code names page. So I'm just going to open a new tab and switch there. And here I have all the graphic cards from NVIDIA listed. Now I don't want to scroll through all of it, so I'm just going to search for my card, which is the 1650. And you can see there we have two results and the one I have is the last one, GeForce GTX 1650. The code for this card is NV167. And in parentheses here, I have TU117. TU refers to the architecture of the graphic card, which is the Turing architecture. But the code name I am interested in right now is the NV167. So let's go back to our NVIDIA Wiki. And we need to now basically install the appropriate driver for the card. So as you can see here, there are several explanations, but I can see already here what it says in the first point, cards which have a code name from NVE0 or NV110 and newer, which is my card, because my card's code is NV167, I can install the NVIDIA package, which is the latest package for use with the Linux kernel or NVIDIA-LTS for use with the Linux LTS kernel. So what I did in this laptop when I installed Arch Linux, let me minimize the browser and open up the terminal. I typed in sudo pacman-s and I installed NVIDIA. I installed also NVIDIA-utils and also NVIDIA-settings. 
This way, when I booted up the machine, the graphic card was detected and the driver was functioning correctly. Now let me close the terminal and go back to the browser. So now that we have the driver installed, and if you didn't install them before, you need to reboot the system one time, we can go back to the Prime Arch Wiki here. So we installed the drivers, and now we can proceed to the next step. Now we have several ways on how to manage this graphic card. However, because this laptop has an NVIDIA card, which is still supported by NVIDIA, I'm gonna scroll down here to Prime Render Offload, because this is actually the official method supported by NVIDIA. So important to know here, if you're using the latest package from NVIDIA, which is supporting my graphic card, but many others as well, it's fairly simple actually to manage the graphic cards in your system. So what it's basically saying here is that since XOR version 127, the XOR configuration is not needed anymore because the needed options are already present in the driver directly. So this is fairly simple. However, there is one package you need to install to use this method, which is the NVIDIA-Prime here. So if you didn't install this, go ahead in the terminal and type in sudo pacman-s NVIDIA-Prime because this package provides a script that can be used to run programs on the NVIDIA card. It says also here, if for some reasons automatic configuration does not work, it might be necessary to explicitly configure X with a configuration file, but this is an exception. Now we can go down here and see how we can use this. So you can see here we have prime run. This is the script that was installed when we installed the NVIDIA-Prime package. So let me minimize here the browser and pull up the terminal again. So there is one package that I also eventually recommend you to install from the AUR, which is called GLX Info. GLX Info, it's a package that will display info about a GLX extension and the OpenGL renderer. Once you install the package, then you can use it also in combination with the script we just installed as per the Arch Wiki. So for example, we can type in prime-run and then GLX Info and then the pime symbol and then grep open double quotes and then open GL renderer, close double quotes and hit enter. Now you can see now the OpenGL renderer right now it's using the GeForce GT X1650 graphic card. And that's only for the renderer because if I open up here the info center in KDE, you will see that actually the main graphic card used right now is the Intel card. But with this script here, I can tell basically the system which graphic card to use for certain applications. So let me close this window. Now I'm using the Intel card here because it drains the battery much less than the Nvidia card and I don't need actually the Nvidia card to work unless I'm doing some heavy things. So for example, let's say now that I'm using my laptop for just productivity tasks, but I want to switch over to Caden Live and edit maybe a 4K video. So for that, I want to use my Nvidia card. So I can run now the Prime Run script again and tell the system to run Caden Live on the Nvidia card. So to do this, I can type in Prime dash run and then Caden Live and hit enter. And you can see now Caden Live is starting up and I can go full screen here and start to edit my video. And this program is gonna use now the Nvidia card. So once you have done with this and you finish up your work, you can close the program and the system underneath is still on the Intel card. So this is one way to do it from the command line. It's a matter of personal preference. I don't really mind doing this from the command line, but if you don't wanna do it from the command line, there is something else that we can use. So let me minimize here the terminal and go back to the browser. And let's go on the top of the page and let's click on this Optimus for NVIDIA. Now, as it says here, NVIDIA Optimus is a technology that allows an Intel integrated GPU and discrete NVIDIA GPU to be built into and accessed by a laptop. Now we can check here for available methods. And as you can see here, we have several options. You can go ahead and use only the Intel card or the Nvidia card, although this might be easier if you switch one of those cards off in the BIOS. But we have other methods here. Now prime render offload is what we just did through the command line. And this is the official method supported by Nvidia. However, if you wanna have the possibility to switch graphic cards with a single command, we can use the Optimus Manager. As it says here, Optimus Manager achieves maximum performance out of the NVIDIA GPU and switches it off if not in use. 
So let's go ahead and configure actually Optimus Manager here. I'm just going to show you this an example because at the end it's really a matter of personal preference if you want to use Prime Render Offload or Optimus Manager. Now there are also some other methods here that are mentioned. One is NVIDIA XRun, which basically runs separate X sessions on different TTYs with NVIDIA graphics. We have also Bumblebee, which provides Windows-like functionality. However, the problem with Bumblebee, it is that it has significant performance issues. And we have also the possibility to use Nouveau, which is the open driver for NVIDIA. But of course, it offers poorer performance compared to the NVIDIA driver. Now, if you have an old laptop with an old NVIDIA card, you still have the option to install NVIDIA drivers, which offers better 3D performance, but probably don't support the latest version of XORG. In that case, you can use the Nuvo driver. I do have a MacBook Pro from 2011, which has an old NVIDIA card, and I'm going to do a separate video for that to show you how you can configure also the drivers there. So let's go down here and click on Optimus Manager. And we can see here we have our Optimus Manager upstream documentation. So let's click on that. And this is opening up the GitHub page. So I definitely recommend you to look through this page because it's very well explained and provides very good information about Optimus Manager and its functionality. Now, Optimus Manager is a package that you can download from the AUR. And let's scroll down here where we have the usage section. So you can see once the package is installed, you can run it from the command line with Optimus Manager Switch NVIDIA or Switch Intel or Switch Hybrid. It's that easy. Now, we can install this. I didn't install it yet on my system. So let me minimize the browser here and open up the terminal. And because I have already yay installed, I can type in yay-s and then optimus-manager. And because I'm using KDE, I'm going to install also optimus-manager. Dash QT. This will give us a widget which will appear here in the icon tray and I will be able to switch graphics by right clicking on this widget here basically. If you're using another desktop environment, for example GNOME here, as it says here in the project, there is also a GNOME shell extension which is called Optimus Manager Indicator that you can install to have the same functionality. Anyway, let's go ahead and install these packages and I'm going to select here the first one and for the manager QT I'll do the same. And I will accept the defaults here. Same for differences to show none. Enter my password. Now, because I installed GLX info before, as you can see here, this is a conflicting package. So because it's in conflict, I will type in yes here to remove it and hit enter. And then I can proceed with the installation. Now, this is going to take a moment to download and install. So I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, the packages are now installed. So what I need to do now, I need to reboot once the machine. So let me reboot the machine quickly. So I'll type in reboot. And because this is not a VM, I'm gonna be back in a second when the machine is back up. So I am back here on my desktop and you can see here in the icon tray, I have this new icon here. I know it's a little bit small to see, but this is the Optimus Manager QT icon because we installed the package and also the Optimus Manager package, of course. Now, if you don't see the icon when you boot up the machine, just go to the launcher and type in here, Optimus Manager, just click the program here and the icon will appear. Now, what this does basically, it gives us the option to right click on the icon and here, as you can see, we can switch to Intel, switch to NVIDIA, or switch to hybrid mode. Now, every time you will switch the graphic card, you basically have to log out and log in again for the changes to take effect. So keep that in mind if you are working on something before switching your graphic card. Now, there is still one thing that I would like to point out. And that is, if we go back to the browser, and this is again the GitHub page for Optimus Manager. And as you can see before here, we could also use the command line to switch graphic cards. Now, the thing is, we need to be careful also with the power management. Now, as it says here, since version 1.2, power management is disabled by default. So the NVIDIA GPU will stay powered on, consuming energy, until manual configuration is done. This choice was made because there is no catch-all configuration that works for all laptop models, and incorrect configuration often breaks the boot process. So this is to keep in mind because if you're using this method with Optimus Manager, you might need to go in here into the guide on power management and configure this manually in order for the graphic card to be powered down when you are not using it. Now, I'm not going to go into this in this video, but you can look at the GitHub page here because it's very simply explained and the guide is also fairly simple to follow. However, if you're using a new card, like in my case, 
and you're using one of these architectures. So for example, as it says here, this configuration is only available for laptops with the Turing generation DPU, which is the one I have. If you remember when we saw the Nouveau Vikis page, this graphic card had a connotation TU, which is the Turing generation. And also you need to have Coffee Lake or above. If you have at least this configuration in the laptop and you're using the latest driver, as it says here, in the driver 43517, NVIDIA allowed their kernel module to handle power switching by itself and completely turn off the GPU when not in use. To use this feature, you need to perform some manual setup steps that Optimus Manager does not know on its own. So to turn this on, you need to basically follow this guide on the NVIDIA website and then it will work fine as well. Then if you don't have these architectures, you can go down here and see other configuration types and decide which one works best for you. Now, these are the two approaches that I used on this laptop to manage the Intel card and the NVIDIA card. As I said before, the prime render offload is the officially supported method from NVIDIA that I showed you before with the script, or you can use also Optimus Manager in order to switch graphic cards from the command line. Differences between the two is, of course, that with the prime render offload, you can tell the system which graphic cards need to run which program, and with Optimus Manager, you can basically switch the graphic card entirely. So it's really up to you to decide which one you want to use, and maybe the best way is to go ahead and experiment that for yourself and see which one you prefer. As I said before, for older NVIDIA cards, I will try to do another video with an older laptop, which has a much older NVIDIA card in there. So there you go, this is one way how you can manage those two graphic cards in the laptop. Again, as I said before, in the wiki there are several methods and I definitely encourage you to try out the method that suits you best. I will try also to make another video on an older laptop with a much older card and see what we can do there. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.